What's going on guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dean Diaconis. I'm a real estate agent in Florida, specifically the Tampa Bay area. And today I wanna to talk about something that's pretty important when it comes to sellers and listing their property. What do you do? How do you prepare your house to go onto the market? I've got 14 points here that I wanna share with you. But before we begin, I made chapters for each of these points so I can make it easy for you to come back and take a look at exactly everything that we covered here today. Let's go. Number one that we got here is declutter. I cannot tell you how many times I've been to a house with buyers and there's just stuff all over the place. And right off the bat, as we enter, the first impression is there's too much stuff in here. There's way too much stuff. It, you gotta eliminate things, minimalize. If you need to, even rent a storage space for the time being and trust me, it will be worth the money. Like for an example here, I had a listing the other day and the seller had big bar stools around the, the countertop area. They were thick, they were gaudy. And I recommended that we should get rid of these bar stools because the buyer's not coming to buy the bar stools, they're coming to take a look at the house and to potentially buy the house. So we took them away and it shows beautifully now, it's a lot more open space. That's what buyers wanna see. They wanna see the house, not the stuff you have in it. The next thing that you wanna do is remove all the bold paint colors. I'm talking about the bright reds, the, the blues, the greens, that kind of stuff. You wanna get all that stuff out, paint it. Neutral colors, neutral colors. Go to Home Depot, Lowe's, make it a weekend project, repaint those rooms, or better yet, just repaint the whole house. Just get it out of the way. It's gonna make a huge, huge difference. Once a buyer comes into the house, they smell that fresh paint, and they, it's just, it's, it's an immediate, like a, this is fresh, freshly painted. You can put that in the advertisement. It makes a huge difference and you'll get your return on investment, $100 weekend project. Just do it, just do it. Don't ask any questions, just do it. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna have a super clean place. Get it deep cleaned right before the listing goes live. So when the buyers come in, cause you're gonna get the most activity right after you go live within the first week, two weeks. That's when you get the most activity. So you wanna have a super clean place. When buyers come in, they wanna see that you have taken care of the property and this is how the property is. You treated it with care, it's clean. And if it's clean, that means everything else about the property is clean as well. So when a buyer comes in there, place is clean. It's a good first impression. It smells good, fresh paint on the walls. It shows really, really nicely. The next thing that you wanna do is you know how you have those weekend projects that you have put, been putting off for like months, like fixing the little things like the broken outlets or maybe a faucet that was broken. You wanna get those things fixed, get all those little things fixed because buyers see them. Even if you have started to neglect them, buyers are gonna see them and they're gonna assume that this house isn't being taken care of. So get the little things fixed. That's very important. I can't tell you how many times I've taken buyers into a home and they've pointed out the little things and that I'm not making an offer because of these little things. It's cost virtually nothing and it makes a huge difference. The next thing is pets. I know you love them. I love them too. I got three dogs myself, but you want to eliminate the odors. They give odors you may not notice, but you want to eliminate the odors. If a buyer comes into the place and it smells like dog, ugh, as opposed to the house they were at before that doesn't smell like dog, you know, which one are, you, which one are they going to choose? Obviously the, not, the one that does not smell like dog. So clean the place, light some candles, clean carpets if you got it, you know, just make, make the place smell nice. The next thing you wanna do, and it may be a little bit out of the box here, but you wanna hide all political and religious beliefs. If you are a hardcore Trump supporter, or if you love Joe Biden, nobody needs to know that. Same thing goes with religions. These factors may come into play and they might deter a perfect buyer from your property just based on these feelings, these reactions. You want to keep the house as neutral as possible. Neutral, not right, not left, not up, not down. Right there in the middle is where you're going to get the most possibility to get the perfect buyer. Don't let those things come into play when they're making a decision. The next thing is, I hear it all the time. When I have buyers out, they come into the property and they're like, look at all this natural light. You want to brighten up the house, put some lights in there, make sure all the light bulbs are working, make sure that there's light coming in through the windows and open the curtains, have it bright. That's a huge, huge play when, when they're making their decision. If they're gonna move up to make an offer on the property, they want natural light. They love it, natural light. That could be the deciding factor between a sale and no sale, natural light, and it's so simple. Put some lamps, light bulbs, open some windows, done, easy. Let's talk about curb appeal. They see all the houses are nice, they're nice and nice. They pull up to yours. How does the curb appeal look? 
when they're coming in, is the grass cut? Are the bushes trimmed? What kind of uh, landscaping is it? Do you have plants? Just how does it look overall? Is it the, do you power wash the exterior? They want, when they want to be wowed from right when they pull in, they want to be like, wow, this, this is a nice place. Also, mailboxes, the mailbox. I don't know why, but you know, when you see when you go into the house and you see a nice mailbox as opposed to one that's tipping over and wood and just deteriorating, put a new mailbox, whatever you got to do, a new mailbox. And this is an interesting statistic. According to the Realtor magazine, the appearance, the curb appeal makes a 7% difference. It sells for 7% more than a house that doesn't have good curb appeal. So picture this, okay? You're paying your Realtor 6% commission. The house, if you make the curb appeal look good, you get 7% more. There's your commission just by the curb appeal. Remember that. Here's the thing to remember. All upgrades matter. If you're looking at your kitchen and you, you got appliances from 1964, maybe it's time to upgrade them. Or the faucets are, you know, they're, they're old and rusted. Maybe it's time to upgrade them. There's upgrades. Up, look around your house. What can you upgrade? If you can't afford the appliance, you can't upgrade the appliances, that's fine. What else can you upgrade? The little handles on the cabinets in the kitchen. Those make a big difference. It looks really nice to have some new handles in the cabinets, maybe some doorknobs. The little updates that you can do, whatever you can do, wherever you can do it, that makes a difference. The buyers are going through your property and they're, they're taking note of everything. If it looks nice, they're going to say, hey, you know, this one's one to consider. And that's what you want. You want to have more buyers considering your property. Don't have things that are dated. It just, it doesn't look good. Upgrade wherever you can. Closets, closets, closets. Keep your closets clean and organized. When a buyer opens up the, the closets and they're looking in there and there's clothes all over the place, like my closet, not gonna lie, but if there's clothes all over the place, it's not gonna look good. Organize it folded, hung, make as much, make it look like this is how their closet's gonna look if they were to purchase this property. Make it look nice. Make it look nice. This is their potential closet. You want them to imagine their clothes in that closet, not your clothes all over the floor. Here's another thing to take into consideration. Now, it's, this is not a necessary thing. It's a useful thing. A pre-listing home inspection. So you want to get a, a pre-listing home inspection and you got the report, you get the report back and you see a bunch of things on this report that you're like, okay, well, we can take care of this. We can take care of this. We can do that. We can do that. It's just a bunch of little things that you can take care of. And you get these things done because on the buyer's inspection report, these things are going to show up. And on top of that, if you have something major wrong with the house, you also know that you could potentially take care of that before it becomes a problem. And you go on the market and you waste a bunch of time because they do the inspection. It falls through during the inspection. And now you're back on the market, wasting a bunch of time. Nobody likes a bunch of wasted time. I would highly recommend doing a pre-listing home inspection. It's not, not necessary recommended. The next most important thing after kitchens, in my opinion, from what I've seen from my buyers, is the backyard. You want the backyard to look nice. This is where the buyer's imagining they're relaxing. They're playing with the kids. You know, maybe you got a pool, they're jumping around the pool, you got a barbecue. You don't wanna have a bunch of holes in the yard from the dog. The grass needs to be cut. The, maybe you got a garden, make the garden look nice. The whole area needs to be clean. And Ima just imagine that you're having a party and all your, your family and friends are coming over and they're highly judgmental. If it's not clean, they're gonna shun you. You need to have this place immaculate. Backyard, make it look good, makes a difference. Always be ready to show. From the moment that you have it in your head that you know you're about to go onto the market, just, just think, instill it in your head that you need to have the place ready to show. I'm not saying to have it you know, immaculate at all times, all day, every single day, but you, there may be times where you have a buyer who's in the neighborhood and they're like, hey, can we go see this house today, you know, at three o'clock? And you say, no, it's not ready to show. I got stuff all over the place. And that buyer goes and sees something else. You just miss the buyer. At all times, just be ready to have a potential buyer coming through your house and keep it like that. Don't have no, no messes. And if you do have a party or whatever, make sure it's cleaned right up afterwards. Very, very important. At all times, just be ready to show. Finally, and what's most important is know the market that you're in. Look at everything that's going on around you. Know, you got to know what has sold, what's for sale, who you're competing with. If there's, if there's a house that sold a year ago, okay, and you tell, you're like, okay, this house sold a year ago for, let's say, $500,000, so I think I can get this for my house. First, the market, the market has changed from a year ago, no doubt, no doubt. Second, if the house that you are comparing it to is more updated than yours and you're still trying to get $500,000 in a declining market, that's not going to happen. It's just it's not realistic to expect that. So just know what's happening in your neighborhood, what most recently is happening in your neighborhood. 
you know, is, is there a house over there that's for sale? This guy over here is closed. Just know that, know that and just keep that in mind because when you're on the market, this is what you're gonna expect. And you don't wanna be sitting there being like, why haven't we gotten any offers? Well, the reason you haven't gotten any offers is because you're overpriced. Straight up, that's that's the reason. And you're, you're not educated on what's happening in your marketplace. So just be aware of everything that's going on in your in your neighborhood, in your community, in your marketplace. So that is everything I have for the sellers. I have a bunch of more things in my head that I can go over, but if you have any questions about anything, I'm gonna leave my details below. Please feel free to call, text, email, visit my website, deandiaconisrealestate.com. And if I provided value to you today, please do me a favor, like and subscribe. Help me out a lot. Take care, guys. Good talking to you. Have a great day.